Welcome to the Slowly Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Bavani. Uh, I'm looking really forward to my talk with Giacomo again, Giacomo Zucco. Uh, most of you, my, most of my listeners, are probably don't have to introduce him. So he's sitting in um, Italy with his girlfriend and their baby. And um, so I'm um, really hoping to have an insightful um, you know, analysis of how he you know, from his perspective, how this whole thing with the coronavirus and COVID-19 virus is unfolding, the economical, financial, monetary situation, the, you know, the, the chaos and panic, the, the schizophrenic behavior of governmental officials, politicians, um, the, the, you know, the understatement or the, uh, you know, creating of, you know, the, it's really hard to discern now fact from fiction, from conspiracy theories, from rumors. So anyway, really looking forward without further ado, Please, if you uh, like, should like it, give it a, a like, subscribe, retweet, share, whatever you do. Uh, write me if you have any, uh, like if you want to sponsor me, like in, as an ethical Bitcoin sponsor, hello at thetotalconnected.com is my email address. And really, thanks so much for your support and for listening. And I'll talk to you soon again. Hey, Giacomo. Giacomo Zucco, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for coming to my show, the Total Bitcoin podcast show. It's a limitless uh, rabbit hole recap, uh, which I do once in a while. How are you doing, uh, Giacomo? Fine, not bad. Uh, my first uh, lockdown experience, but uh, so far so good. Mm. You know, I was, um, uh, we were breakfast, we were, you know, eating breakfast in the morning with my, with my girlfriend and she's, you know, uh, one of your followers. And she was just watching, you know, this video which you made with your girlfriend in Italy. It, it was disturbing, you know, somehow because she was concerned. And she said, by the way, greetings and best wishes to all of you. Thanks, um, Jacoba. So, um, I, of course, you know, I want to talk to you about Bitcoin, you know, the whole impact this, 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 this crazy situation has, this extraordinary situation. Um, you know, we have this group, I'm not sure whether you are in this group too, uh, where we t talk about Bitcoin and coronavirus, whatever, geopolitics and core eclipse, you know, of Give Bitcoin or Swan Bitcoin, whatever it's called. Uh, he, he, um, he posted um, an article uh, from The Independent and uh, it is disturbing. I mean, it says here, Italy suspends mortgage payments amid lockdown. I mean, that's, you know, that's a good sign. Entire countries in state of quarantine over virus. Payments on mortgages are to be suspended in Italy, blah, blah, blah. And there are more than 9,000 people have been infected by COVID-19 in Italy, where the total number of reported deaths jumped to 463 on Monday, which is totally intriguing to me, Giacomo. An increase of over 25% compared to the day before. I'm going to send you that article anyway, but... Sure, sure. What is going on? I mean, wh why Italy? Is that just a pure coincidence? Yeah. So I think this is a very good uh, question. Uh, mo most people right now are struggling to grasp uh, a few notions of uh, virology, biology, why soap can help washing your hand against the virus, or maybe health, uh, immunitary system boosting and stuff like that. But very few people are trying to get a little bit of background in statistics to understand a little bit what's going on. Uh, statistics will never turn a bad situation into a good situation, but can give you the instruments to actually understand something which is actually not really uh, making a lot of sense and to adjust a little bit, uh, at least the quantitative expectation that you have for the situation around you. For example, uh, in Italy, the situation with the uh, virus, so the positive, uh, the positive cases, uh, was something like this. You have one guy feeling ill for pneumonia, not bacterial pneumonia, so the, the doctor is assuming uh, virus uh, pneumonia, and uh, the doctor uh, he reads into the newspaper about these uh, Wuhan things, and so the, 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 this, uh, this lady, this female doctor, she has the idea to try to test him, but it was not the protocol, so it was against the protocol because there was no cases in Italy and, and no, uh, nothing to worry about. So uh, unless there is a link with China, no test uh, gets that. But then the, the wife of this guy, she thinks that the guy was meeting another friend, a colleague, coming back from China. So now they do the test and he's positive and he's called the patient zero in Italy. And he's like, he's like a, a super spreader because this guy was sick, like with a high fever, 
but he was very, he was a sportsman. So basically, while sick, he started to do marathons and uh, and uh, soccer, uh, soccer uh, 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 rounds and stuff like that. So he spread a lot. But then everybody started to test uh, everything around him. And so the, 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 the appearance was that basically there was a very specific link from China to, to this town, Codogno, and from there to Lombardy. Uh, the, the, the problem is that the, the patient that was going to infect this guy from China, he was completely negative uh, again and again. So he was not the missing link. So it was not for this false assu assumption by the wife of this man uh, there would be no, but no, uh, but there, no, sorry, virological, epidemiological link to China at all, and so this guy will not be tested. Uh, another example is the fact that uh, if you get testings done in hospitals, the, uh, doctors will start to test mainly the people that are already sick and are already already serious because the symptoms are more clear. They, it's easy to exclude anything else, and so you will basically test most of the people were serious already. So you, you will have a skewed perception of the mortality rate or the fatality rate of the virus. Because of course, you have a population of, let's say, 100. Of these, let's say that two are infected. Of these two, oh, let, let's do more, sorry, i do again. You have 100 person. Of these, let's say that 10 are infected. Over 10, seven are feeling, are feeling fine, but three are pretty serious. And then uh, of these three serious, one will die. If you only test the three persons that are expressing serious symptoms, then your mortality rate will be 33% because one over three tested positive will actually be dead. So that's what happened in Italy, especially at the beginning. There was this uh, fake statistic assumption because people were testing only the people with very serious symptoms and with uh, already pre-assumed epidemi epidemiological links with other people already suspected. This created two things. The, first, uh, the same is happening in the USA, actually. Very, very the same. In order to not spread panic, uh, if, 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 if you feel sick and you ask for a coronavirus test, they will tell you no because you are not serious and you are not in contact with somebody from an infected area. So they will, they will actually deny your testing. So what's the effect? You have basically two effects. The first is to basically uh, increase the confidence in uh, epidemiological uh, uh, hypothesis. So, yeah, this guy is spreading from China to Italy and from Italy to USA, which is actually not the case. This is, I mean, the case is actually worse than that because the real situation that probably the virus is already out there in, in a lot of places. I mean, it's already out of control. And that also makes the quarantine measures less effective than they seem. They are still a little bit effective, but way less than they seem because you're not really identifying. You are just uh, testing people which is already clearly sick. And so you basically have, uh, you have a selection bias, which is very, very strong. The second effect is overestimating the mortality rate and the fatality rate. Uh, mortality rate is how many, how many people will die for the disease and fatality rate, how many people uh, with the disease will die. But anyway, you, you, overestimate, uh, you overestimate both. Uh, like for example, in, uh, in, uh, in Italy, what happened was a serious overestimation of the fatality rate. I think that the closest thing to serious statistics you can do for now are South Korea, because in South Korea, instead of testing only the very, very sick people inside the hospital in life support, they started testing random people in vehicles, uh, uh, thousands of people, they did basically right now the amount of tests per person in South Korea and Italy is getting closer. But uh, but the point is that South Korea testing was statistically uh, widespread. So it's it's safe to assume that they they are approximating a good percentage of the affected population. Or the, the, of course it's, it's still a lower number than the actual infected people. But it's probably more realistic in Italy. The fact that they started only in the in the uh, intensive uh, intensive cure um, uh, reports makes makes us think that probably they are underestimating the number of infects and overestimating the, the fatality rate. Uh, same same is for Germany, for example. We know that the first guy infected in Germany was this, the first discovered infected guy, which is not as to say the first guy was discovered before the first Italian infected guy. But discovered, but for the first weeks, every case in Germany, they were trying to connect with somebody from Italy. 
So uh, th this, I mean, this can can sound like pedantic and ultimately irrelevant. It is irrelevant for what you can do personally because uh, basically, still wash your hands, uh, try to uh, limit the contacts a little bit, uh, try to be adversarial, think about the first order consequences of the, the, the illness, the, the disease, and second order consequence on the economy of all this mess. Uh, because even if it's less serious than it seems, the consequences of the on the economy will be serious anyway if everybody thinks that it's serious because it's a self fulfilling prophecy. So think adversarially, be prepared, that nothing changes. But it changes a lot, it, it will change a lot in, in community policies because, for example, travel ban or quarantine, I mean, uh, who cares? I mean, now they are quarantining everybody and, okay, uh, I will not go around challenging uh, police, uh, police uh, yeah. cars <laughs> just because. But it's basically, it, it's very likely useless or very little, or it will probably have a very, very little impact. And I'm not sure at all that this impact will be, uh, the positive impact that will be there, will be higher than the uh, serious negative impact on the, uh, on the economy. Also, people tend to also underestimate another thing, which is where is healthcare, where are healthcare, healthcare resources coming from? So people say, uh, okay, it's not so deadly, but there are limited spaces in intensive care units. So even if uh, uh, it's not so deadly, many people will die because there is no space anymore in intensive care unit, which is true. So already now in Italy, they are basically starting to select people based on age because there are no intensive care for everybody. You cannot basically do very expensive, like external circulation of the blood with oxygenation. That's super expensive. You cannot do, you cannot do that to several patients. So what you have to do there is basically to have more economic resources. Economic resources don't grow uh, on trees. They get either printed out of uh, out of uh, inflation theft by central banks, or they get collected uh, with violence by, uh, from the government, or they are uh, invested from the private sector. But in, in a place like Italy, where the private sector is very very overregulated, overcontrolled, and, and very little in comparison to the in, to the state, everything you have basically is uh, in, is financing by taxation. And financing by taxation, if you shut down every economic activity for many many months. Uh, basically reduces to zero. So you will have to beg money from the European Union with some loans and for the World Bank and the internationally, um, International Monetary Fund. And then you will get bankrupt because you cannot pay back. Uh, and then you will not have money for the hospitals and the uh, ICUs anymore. So it's all very connected. And I think people are, people are having a very hard time to try to think rationally. Uh, if, you, if you ask publicly to think rationally and to not panic and to think about uh, things scientifically, try to, trying to, uh, to analyze statistics, uh, the, the reception you get is basically, oh, you are underestimating the problem, you are like a denialist, you are just a conspiracy theorist, you are, uh, but, but actually that's not the case. Uh, when, when I say stop and don't panic and think about it, what I mean is that in some ways the situation is even more serious than the one you're representing. Uh, but there are more opportunity costs and there are more, like, for example, I don't think that uh, quarantine is bad because the uh, situation is good. I think quarantine is bad because the situation is way worse than, they, than what they are depicting. Uh, basically, the virus is probably... Let me finish with the last consideration. Uh, bias theory. So, uh, this virus is from Wuhan, right? We don't really know. Probably... Possibly it is, but try to think about that. If you have a, a widespread uh, global uh, pandemics of respiratory corona, uh, diseases by, uh, inflicted by coronavirus, coronavirus, where do you think there are more probability for this kind of new strands of coronavirus to be detected? Maybe in one of the most specialized university in the, in the world about coronaviruses and SARS, which is in Wuhan, in a city which is a, like a 4 billion people megalopolis, super connected, hyper connected with most connection from all the China. So if you think, so assume that the virus is already everywhere in November. And now you have to ask yourself, probability of discovering it in every single medical center of the world. The result is probably Wuhan, uh, in the in the top percentile of probability of discovery. 
So the fact that it was discovered there doesn't really mean that it's originally from there. It just means that it was supposed to be discovered there by a simple probabilistic consideration. So let's say the number of the, the causality, so the, the testing is very biased because people will test where they think they have to test and they will not test elsewhere. So the number of tests is not really significant, except for South Korea and for a, a few other cases, like for example, cruises, like uh, the Diamond Princess cruises. In that case, the population is really random because it's random people on a cruise. So you have very little bias. Maybe you have some bias because there are old, older people going cruises. You don't have babies and babies are very unaffected. So uh, you have some uh, age uh, skewed bias, but basically you have a random sample. But except for cruises and for, uh, and for uh, South Korea, and since yesterday night, Germany, they are starting in Germany to do some random, random checks. A uh, number of positive tests are basically insignificant. What is significant a little bit more is, no, uh, is number of uh, dead people in intensive cares with serious symptoms because you cannot really miss that. I mean, if you really have uh, an overload of dead people in hospital that you didn't have last year mm -hmm. with the seasonal flu, you tend to notice that. So it's unlikely that... Uh, that stuff was already around and nobody noticed. Which is, I mean, I'm still not 100% sure because I know from some medical friends that are doctors that in uh, Octo last October and November, there was an anonymous, uh, anomalous wave of uh, viral uh, pneumo pneumonias in Italy, for example. So I don't know, we don't have the data to say that this kind of anomaly is not present right now in Germany and the USA. The point is that you, you retroconnect causally what, what you didn't connect before. So anyway, I, okay, I talked a lot. But the point is that mm -hmm. situation is, you cannot say it's nothing. It's clearly a new, uh, a, new brand, a new branch of coronavirus, which we don't have any immune protection from. So it's very aggressive and very serious. And it creates... A, a pneumonia is can create a pneumonia which is not as serious as uh, MERS, the Middle Middle East uh, mm -hmm. Respiratory Syndrome, and that is a little bit a little bit less uh, deadly apparently than SARS, but still it's pretty bad. And there are no immunity and no vaccines so far, so it's bad, uh, of course. But the, the the kind of secondary effect in panic and culture, basically you have. We discussed about Bitcoin and shitcoin about the pendulum, you know, from no coiner to shitcoiner because you, 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 you tend to overcompensate your mistake with the, an excess on the other round. So if you were a no coiner and you didn't believe it, then you understand you're wrong and now you become a complete shitcoiner because now that you have to overcompensate for the fact of having been wrong once, once about Bitcoin. Same thing here. Most of the people here spend the first weeks of, uh, of news minimizing and like uh, underestimating and like it's all normal it's only the flu there is nothing literally nothing happening and now they feel they have the need to overcompensate by saying uh, it's the apocalypse we want the government to uh, to lock down everybody in their house uh, please send the military to to shoot at people in the street because we want a global dictatorship to take away control of society completely that they they overcompensate because they were minimizing before Oh, wow. <laughs> so, Giacomo, I mean, okay, I think it's unproductive to go into there because I'm not a, you know, medical uh, guy, medical expert, but there are some investigative scientific people, witness experts uh, that have, you know, done some testimonials, but, you know, people can do their own research. It's just the whole timing and the origin and whether the question at all, you know, whether this could be a bio weapon engineered, uh, you know, at least partially that has, that could have been leaked is, is, you know, it's really interesting, the whole timing of the coincidences. Uh, so, okay, so, you know, let's not, go, let's not even go there. Um, what do you think, I mean, is, is this like the, um, I mean, I'm, I'm not underestimating it at all and I'm not, I'm not panicking. It's just, I think we need to, you know, as you say, we need to uh, look at this uh, at face value and, and look at the facts and, and, uh, you know, take preventive measures personally, you know, whether it be disinfecting, washing hands, not touching your face, washing your hands with soap. Um, and the thing I'm a little bit concerned about whether this could be, you know, like a little bit more than just, um, you know, contagious via um, a material that, you know, if it's, for example, airborne. 
but yeah, it's, you know, it's a totally different discussion. But Jacob, I mean, do, do you think this is like um, the circumstances and the conditions that has been created, the perfect like storm for Bitcoin? Uh, on the one hand, like, you know, uh, um, uh, positive for Bitcoin, but on the other hand, um, like the best excuse for governments to ban cash, for example. Yeah, so about uh, payments, it's very interesting because in a typical situation of crisis and shutdown and, uh, and um, financial apocalypse, you get basically people moving back to cash. Like uh, banks are closing. I mean, it's not happening yet. Banks are functioning right now. But if they don't, like in Cyprus or in Greece or in the Soviet Union or whatever, uh, during a collapse, then people will switch to cash. But cash is really something that requires a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. Not only the, the paper cash itself uh, has some probability to actually transfer the virus because it's, it's just paper. So it can, uh, it can be a biohazard to move cash. But even in order to exchange cash, you have to maximize face-to-face. -face. And we live in a world in which part of the privileged Western population was already quite adapting to a, a lot of uh, uh, distance interactionless commerce like uh, you can do smart workings, uh, e-learning, uh, uh, deliver, home delivery, a lot of this stuff. And now uh, we can still do this stuff and we are even encouraged to do this stuff instead of, uh, of meeting face to face. Like we are basically uh, providing anything via delivery right now. It's not hyper functional, it's lower, but, but it functions, it, 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 it works. So. We are using credit cards for that, uh, but it, it's interesting because in case of simultaneous face-to-face um, -face, uh, relationship collapse because of the healthcare concerns and financial collapse, the, the literal uh, only alternative you have is Bitcoin. So yes, that could be a perfect storm. What we are seeing right now is that we have the beginning of the concerns about uh, ca physical cash, but nobody's really, I mean, there are other concerns, other more obvious uh, uh, threats than, than cash. So people are still not really caring. And um, on the other hand, the financial infrastructure on the West is not collapsing yet. Uh, it may happen, but it's not the case yet. And it may not be the case for, for weeks or for months. So uh, we still don't see it direct. Like I don't have friends and families calling me. Uh, please, I need to buy this stuff. I need Bitcoin because uh, it's not happening yet. Credit cards work and, uh, and PayPal works. It may not work in the countries where this kind of infrastructure is not reaching people yet, like in Africa. But right now in Africa, they are either less affected, which I don't think, or less aware, like they don't care yet. They, the people are dying for pneumonia, but they're not really... Uh, testing uh, anybody or they are not really co connecting the pieces. So uh, they, they're just used to that. Some people die for pneumonia and now there are many, many more people, but still they, they go on, they, they go on with life. So I don't think they are, they are reducing cash interaction right now, but in theory, this kind of, so compared to the purely uh, financial uh, apocalypse, like in 2008, where the origin of everything is just financial, this kind of uh, viral apocalypse uh, variant can be even more interesting for Bitcoin because it, uh, it, it, it destroys or it could destroy the, the reliability of the financial system, but it also incentivizes uh, uh, cyberspace as compared to mid space and, uh, and distant relationship and online. And, and so in a normal apocalypse, you get back to gold in, in a digital, uh, viral apocalypse, you need digital gold. Uh, of course, I don't think that we will see any difference in the very short run because it's still, it's a process where, I mean, we could see the beginning of the serious adoption and interest right now for the real use for Bitcoin, which is basically saving and uh, online permissionless spend. So the central banks, I mean, there's no other way, right? The central banks are are going to print their way out. This is, I mean, if, if, if things get out of control or get more out of control than already is, so central banks will print their way out. I mean, with, with multi, multi trillions and we're going to have, I mean, we're already seeing the signs, right? Manufacturing's plummeted, uh, supply, the, the oil, oil price has dropped 30%. I mean, all these things uh, like, you know, chain reactions of these consequences, where do you see this going? 
So okay, I'm just uh, I'm just like uh, freely uh, I'm just I'm just thinking loud right now, but I'm not 100% sure that this situation itself could immediately trigger a real uh, financial meltdown. I I like to compare this with uh, with 2001 and 2008. So 9/11 in the US. So the end of the optimism of the end of history and the start of the threat of terrorism. Uh, which is in a way similar to the situation of virus. It's something real, it's not something made up, but it's something that the government will, uh, the government will take advantage of in order to impose better tax and stuff like that. So it's a similar situation, a real threat, but, but manipulated into being a way to take uh, freedom away from people. So uh, there was a serious economic crisis after this kind of uh, uh, global crisis of faith, global crisis of optimism, but it was kind of short-lived because the, the, the financial markets usually, they like to have an external explanation for a crisis. So if you, if, basically, if you have a, some kind of uh, uh, explanation or what is happening you are confident that where the when the explanation is uh, is uh, is exhausting his power so when the terrorism is taken care of then he will finally get back to normal so the the, the recovery power of the financial system is uh, is stronger in this situation so in 2001 you see a crisis but not the crisis in 2008 it was worse because uh, basically there was no external threat there was a trigger like sub, uh, subprime uh, mortgages but it was not an external uh, threat. It was just a, 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 an internal endogenous uh, exhaustion of the, of the self-sustainability of the system. So I suspect, I don't know, I may be super wrong, but I suspect that we could see something similar here. We have a serious recession and, and, and central bank will print and print and print alone. But this, this kind of Keynesian interventism in which you print in order to, to, to just uh, uh, overcome a small crisis kind of work in the short term if the crisis is, uh, is actually short and, and, and very uh, connected with some external cause. So if they print a lot of money and then they create inflation, they lower interest rates, they will create some, some damage. But then uh, the, the virus situation is somehow managed into control back again. Of course, uh, there will be some kind of uh, civil liberty restriction that would, that would be temporary but never taken back. So the, the, the Coronavirus Act, in order to spy even more in your email and your phone calls, will be uh, temporary forever. But the financial markets, financial markets may actually recover from that when things get under control. But then they create long-term damages that can explode in another crisis after. Of course, since 2001 to 2007, it was like six, six years. Uh, in this case, I don't think we will take six years to see the long-term damages of this kind of uh, uh, super interventism uh, uh, from the central banks. It will be faster, I think. But I'm, I'm not sure that we could not have a, a hiatus of uh, a relative calm in the financial market of six months or something like that. So maybe this, maybe this is a very naive model because the, 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 the past is never really, a, 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 I mean, it's never really a model for the future. But uh, instinctively, I will, I will think that uh, we will not see the, the real crisis now, but the real crisis will be when the market will realize that for, it's not just for an external reason, but for intrinsic reason, everything is unsustainable. And uh, of course, in that case, the, the strong difference between now and 2008 is that in 2008, the, the obvious uh, Keynesian uh, interventist um, answers were easy to do, like interest rates, where they were high enough to cut, and um, money printing was, was low enough to start to really increase it with the uh, QAs, uh, quantitative easings and L uh, LTROs in, or in Europe. Right now, that's not the case anymore. Uh, right now, the monetary leverage is really abused since many, many years. And it's very, very difficult to over abuse it again and again. I mean, uh, there, there is a limit to negative interest rates. You cannot go to um, minus 99% negative right. interest rate. Yeah, but we already have a negative interest rate. I mean, look at Netherlands, Germany, wherever they already have a retail depositing accounts, uh, saving account. They got 
re negative interest rates. So if this like, you know, accelerates, I see sort of a, you know, unexpected swan effect where people like look at Lebanon. I mean, they've already defaulted on each 40% or something on their debt or, or something. So it, I, I, I think there is something brewing up where people will eventually, you know, it's the wake up call is going to come. I mean, do you see that coming for Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, I, I see that coming. Uh, we still, I think there is still some margin for, for, to trick the, the to trick the, the, the truth. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have negative interest rates uh, everywhere, but the U.S. dollar is the most important money market, uh, important money market in the world, and you still have pos very little positive inter interest rates with the dollar, which is the the center of of the structure. So I think there is still margin for them to to play. Uh, it's not really I, I mean, I don't know, but it's not clearly the end of the road for the Keynesian tricks. There are still a few, a few, a few ammos in this in this gun, uh, but not many. And after those, it's 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 over. And Bitcoin can actually be. And Bitcoin is is quietly getting into his halving. And there is, I mean, now there was a little bit of bull market, but not much. But but strong enough to bring back shitcoin noise, a lot of shitcoin noise. I see that even here, I mean, in uh, in Switzerland, when I was last week, or here in Italy, there are there are again people waiting for alt season and and doing uh, more. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But also on Twitter now you have like well, you have Trace Meyer selling oh, Wimble yeah. Wimble, 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 and you yes. have uh, yeah, yeah. Try to do a, a tweet without ever at least three bots trying to spam Telegram, uh, Gram. Uh, under your tweet, there will be like a lot of Telegram gram bots on Twitter, and uh, and Ethereum scam narrative is stronger than than ever. There, I, I I I swear, I have an Italian guy going around scamming people. He's talking about flippening again. I mean, the flippening meme. We thought it was, I mean, uh, not not just dead, dead and decomposed and and forgotten since at least three years, and now flippening is bad. So there is this new wave of uh, complete irrationality, and uh, so probably we are not ready for the for the big um, bull ball yet. But there is a halving. So, I mean, demand and offer. Uh, I mean, at the end, uh, the market is uh, is gonna comply with reality. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you go. I know your baby needs you, uh, uh, Giacomo. Thanks so much for your time. But, it, you know, I just want to say, I mean, it is disappointing to see OG Bitcoin, whatever economists or realists or, you know, turning into shit coiners. So, yeah, but, you know, it's a reality. We've got to uh, all, you know, each one of us got to deal with. Um, so, you know, it's I guess it's about the ethos that each and every one has to, you know, evolve into. Um, so, any final thoughts, Giacomo? Well, Any good news? Uh, <laughs> well, no, there are good news. I mean, uh, the the fact that I, I think that this crisis with uh, with this this panic, uh, whatever it is, and uh, or also this real crisis about the people suffering, will I mean, it can bring something good uh, because uh, more. I th so I try to put it this way. Authorities are clowns, and uh, it's even more clear that they are right now. You have like uh, the OMS and the local doctor, like uh, super guru doctors and politicians, telling everybody this is fine, this is just a flu, and calling crazy anybody which is concerned. And then the next week, they are calling for the army to keep people segregated in their home and sh uh, like, uh, uh, like, uh, let's do like in China. And, and kill people going around and stuff like that. So they are literally switching from this is nothing uh, and re re ridiculing everybody who is actually concerned to this is the actual apocalypse. So give us your money and everything and give us power, supreme power and, and stop thinking and just follow. So they are, they, they are so obviously uh, contradictory, self-contradictory. Mm -hmm. I see people around me. I don't see people becoming libertarians, the opposite. They are scared, so they are becoming, everybody's becoming fascist, basically. Now, every, every one of my friends and family, they want, like, soldiers in the street uh, sh shooting people. That's what they want because they're scared. So they want the illusion of control, the illusion of order, somebody taking care of us, somebody getting control of the situation. So the mindset is not getting very pro-freedom. But 
the trust in the clowns uh, that told them everything is fine and now everything is is is, is over forever. It's it's, it's at away. lower minimum. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's fading away a lot. Mm -hmm. And now they are circulating in social media in Italy. They are circulating all the uh, all the like we have the president of the Democratic Party, which is the former co Communist Party. He bas he was basically when people when for some doctor were asking for people to stay home, he said that that was racism because it was racism against the Chinese community in Milan. And so he created the like posters about uh, hugging Chinese people and he organized a, an, aper an aperitivo in Milan. Like, no, you cannot shut down Milan. Milan is the center we have to. So he organized an aperitivo and now he's sick with the virus and he's oh doing like, God. yeah, and he's, he's doing poster like, okay, we have to stay home and we have to, and, and people are starting to actually just, just, just oppose this to stop and, or, or the, the, this doctor, well, Burioni, like super guru, and he was saying, it's impossible the virus will, in television, to million people, uh, February 2, he said, it's impossible, zero possibility this virus come to Italy. And now he's like, send the army, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, <laughs> this is irresponsible. This yeah, is so schizophrenic. Completely schizophrenic. So people <laughs> is, I think, I hope, people is realizing sch mm -hmm. schizophrenia of uh, the, political narrative and uh, authorities and uh, academic and political authorities. They are clowns. They are clowns for a reason because they have been selected to be clowns mm. by, a, by a selection mechanism which, uh, with, uh, which uh, basically values the, the proximity with, uh, with the state power instead of, uh, instead of market skills. So they are clowns and people, I think, will tend to realize it. And that's a very positive note. So, so we can be hopeful. I mean, it sounds like we can be hopeful that people, you know, wake up and 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 you know and 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 realize the the the, the puppetry. You know, I mean, this this whole you know circus and clownery, uh, and 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 really trust in themselves, in their own judgment, in their own you know, uh, I don't know, uh, intellect or uh, probably probably optimistic. But let's let's <laughs> end on this note. Oh, and another positive note: nobody is freaking talking about Greta Thunberg anymore. So apparently, oh, that's, that's the, the, yeah, apparently the, the virus apocalypse is actually uh, is winning over- uh, Over the environmental, virus. environmental, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, exactly. uh -huh. war. Okay, gotcha. Well, thank you so much, Giacomo. It's always a pleasure talking to you. It was a pleasure. Take good care of you and your family. I will. Hope to talk, see you soon in person. All right, bye-bye. So I do love this talk with Giacomo Zucco. He always has, you know, a beautiful, insightful uh, interpretation analysis and, you know, bigger picture understanding. So take care of yourself, wash your hands with soap. That's the most effective thing, at least preventively. Uh, try, you know, keep a distance. Um, don't touch your face when you're outside. Maybe possibly even, you know, wear a, a plastic latex gloves. Just take care of yourself and your family, your beloved ones and you know uh, strengthen your immune system from within and just be you know just be cautious and be careful and um stack some sats because it's the hardest scars is money the system is going to you know it's doing it's going to make itself obsolete sooner or later it doesn't matter you just you know stack sats long term and nobody can take that away from you nobody can confiscate it from you make sure you know you take care of your security your privacy your private keys, your hardware wallet, get yourself a hardware wallet if you don't have one yet. Don't leave it on exchange. And yeah, thanks so much for support, for listening. If you have any questions, uh, if you're ethical if you're a sponsor, if you're an ethical Bitcoin sponsor, please get in touch with me. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com. I really want to go, you know, to the front of, you know, to person. I do want to, want to do more face-to-face -face personal interviews with, you know, Bitcoiners, experts, economists, uh, 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 entrepreneurs, um, um, coders, programmers, um, and, and, you know, the people who, who really make a difference. And, uh, but I want to do this live face to face, but, and in order to do this, I need resources so I can do really highest quality face to face interviews with it, be audio, just podcast and, or video high quality. So, um, yeah, thanks so much. Make sure you follow me and Joko Mazuka on, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, telegram whatever and get in touch with me thanks so much again and for your help for your support for following me 
and make sure you subscribe on my YouTube channel and on, on any other podcast platform. All right. Have a good day and take good care of yourself. The Total Bitcoin Podcast. Bye. Mm-hmm.